for anyone who just stumbled upon Hellish Quart and sees it for the first time. Hellish Quart is a fighting game about one-on-one -on -one sword dueling, in which the blades block each other using physics, and the characters use motion-captured historical fencing techniques. Players fight as 17th century warriors, Cossacks, Hussars, Janissaries, Highlanders, Tatars, and use sabers, rapiers, broadswords, longswords and many other blades. The game is a love letter to ever more popular historical European martial arts, also known as HEMA. Hellish Quart is an indie game created by a team of just two developers and is now released on Steam Early Access and GOG.com. Hellish Quart is a spiritual successor to games like Bushido Blade or Kengo, but with an European twist. The main feature of the game is that the sword actually physically clash and block each other, using the game's engine's physics simulation. Uh, there are no visible health bars and, like in the aforementioned games, fighters can be killed by a single well-timed and measured attack. The main goal of creating Hellish Quart is to get closer to realistic fencing. There are no pirouettes, saltos, magic attacks, etc. We are aiming for the gameplay and animations that look and feel like a real Hima duo, which you can see on YouTube. We use historical fencing treatises to design the moves, but also we try to capture the chaos and human nature of the fencers, because as we know, actual real-life tournament fights in any martial arts are far from a textbook form examples. So what can you do in the game? How do you control it? You control your fighters with a D-pad or a thumbstick and five buttons. Four of those buttons represent attacks from four angles. High right, high left. Low right, low left. Holding the fifth button changes the guard position. The controls are very similar to games like Tekken, UFC or early Mortal Kombat games. You can walk in any direction and freely sidestep. The directions you input modify the attacks, so for example pressing forward plus any attack will result in attacking forward animation and pressing right plus any attack will result in sidestep attack animation. The goal of the duo is to wound your opponent to the point when he is unable to fight any longer. So for example a cut of hand will end the fight, but a shallow flesh wound will not. On top of those multi-directional cutting attacks you also can change stances by holding a left trigger or spacebar. This will allow assuming various new stances depending on the weapon and will allow to execute yet another set of different attacks. A special stance will also allow to bind your weapon to opponent's weapon and keep the contact between blades, which greatly helps with blocking thrusts. And yet on top of all this you can do a classic special move for example by pressing down forward attack or other combinations. The most important feature of Hellish Quart's combat system is the autoblock. If you don't press any attack, the character will automatically assume correct guard position against an incoming attack. All characters are constantly guarding by default, unless they attack. Guarding doesn't mean that you are invincible when you do it, like in the other fighting games. Guarding just puts your sword on the path of the incoming attack and the sword blocks the opponent's blade with a physical collision. Every body part has its own health. For example, a hit in the head will almost always end the fight, while hit in the left shoulder, that is the one that doesn't hold the sword, will likely not wound your opponent enough to end the duel. The fights in Hellish Quart can be long if both fighters are very careful and care about defense, but usually they are quite short and end horribly. We try to replicate the look and feel of a Hima duel in Hellish Quart. The animations are recorded by Hima practitioners using motion capture. And yes, we have the afterblow. Even if you hit your opponent first, he still can get you with his last dying attack. You probably noticed that winning a sword fight requires a completely different approach than in other fighting games. While in unarmed combat games just mashing the button and pressing forward may work very well, here you'll probably just get blocked and hit back with a deadly riposte. In Hellish Quart, just like in real world fencing, to hit someone you have to first go around his guard. If you just attack the opponent with a single cut, 
and this opponent is ready for your attack, he will easily block it. In Hellish Quart fencers are always blocking when standing or walking around, so you will have to use some tactics to go around their guards. The first basic tactic would be an attack with second intention. Attack with a second intention is an actual real-world fencing tactic and it also works in the game. It goes like this. First, you do a false attack in hope your opponent blocks it and attacks you back. Then, you block or avoid his attack and repost with your real intended attack, right into the opening that might have been created during this exchange. This can go back and forth until one of you makes a mistake or breaks this pattern in some way. Next very good tactic is a distance trap. Distance trap is a real world fencing tactic. You make a move as if you are starting your attack, but then you quickly back out with one or two steps. There is a chance that your opponent will automatically try to repost your false attack, but will just hit the air. Quickly punish his missed attack. Next tricky tactic would be using the long guard. Point your sword at the opponent like if you were going to trust at him, but cut him instead. In Hellish Quart, most trust attacks are done from the long guard, the position where the sword tip points directly at the opponent. To block trust attacks effectively, your opponent also should go into long guard to bind your blade. But when in long guard, he can't block your cut attacks. So, go into a long guard in hopes your opponent also goes into a long guard. And when he does, quickly release the long guard and attack him with a cut. Another thing you can do is simply push the opponent. If your opponent doesn't attack you back and just blocks, go close, push him and follow up with an attack when he staggers. A push is also great when the opponent tends to just walk into you after you block his attacks. Next great trick is attacking into the opponent's attack. It's important to choose a move that will not only hit your enemy, but also block his attack in one motion. Wait for your opponent to attack and hit him with a move which will also block his sword. Some characters have dedicated special moves to do this, but any attack will do if you time it well. Another good way to bypass opponent's guard is moving sideways a little just before you attack to create an opening and hit the opponent from an angle. Automatic guards are designed to block incoming attacks only when the attacking fencer is in front of the fencer that is blocking. If you move to the side a bit, but the opponent stays in place, you can attack at an angle and bypass the auto guard. Those are just but a few offensive ways you can use to win that translate directly from real world sword fighting. Let me quickly explain what is the right of way, also known as fencing priority. This is a 19th or even 18th century rule set for resolving double kills. It was invented to discourage situations where when sparring with blunt training swords, fencers would just attack and not defend, in hope of hitting first. After all, the worst that could happen was a double hit with a blunt weapon resulting in a draw, so why even bother with defense? This mindset led to big differences in sport fights and real actual duels, where the priority was to not die first and kill the opponent second. So here comes the right of way rule, which says that if your opponent started his attack first, you have the obligation to defend it, block it, avoid it, or interrupt it in any other way. If you don't do this and just attack him too, going for a double kill, not minding his weapon striking you too, then he wins anyway. And it doesn't matter who hit first, it matters who started attacking first. Of course, if the opponent's attack gets blocked or gets avoided, then he loses the right of way and now you have it. You need to immediately attack or you lose it. And then again, whoever starts the attack first has the priority again. Ok, let's see some fights and analyze what's happening and why. Jacek started to approach Laszlo first, so he got the right of way. Laszlo blocked his attack, so now Laszlo has the right of way. Instead of attacking, Laszlo dodged back, so he lost the right of way and now Jacek has it. Jacek attacked and hit the air, so now Laszlo has the right of way back. Now Laszlo attacked, but his attack did nothing. I think it's pretty clear right now how this works.
Now, this wasn't a double kill, so the right of way rule had no effect here. But if Laszlo would have managed to hit Jacek with an after blow, Jacek would still win, because he had the right of way. We will see a double hit in the next round. Laszlo had the right of way. Jacek was obligated to defend Laszlo's attack, but instead he chose to do his own attack. Laszlo hit him anyway. And Laszlo wins. That's a clean hit, not a double kill. Again, sneaky clean cuts. Gedeon had the right of way, but Barabash killed him without being hit himself. And the right of way applies only if that's a double kill. And it wasn't a double kill. This whole rule set is about hitting the opponent without being hit yourself. Okay, Barabash had the right of way, Gedeon had the obligation to defend himself, but instead he attacked, and Barabash hit him with the after blow. In this case, Barabash wins, Gedeon should have paid attention to a charging opponent, and instead he went for a quick cut, and paid the price. Same situation, but the other way around. Get on charge and make a cut, and Barabash didn't care for defense, and he paid the price. Get on had the right of way, so he won. That's a clean kill, not a double hit. Barabash attacks, but his attack gets blocked, so he loses the right of way. But instead of preparing a defense for Gedeon's repost, he decides to attack again. And of course Gedeon reposts, so they both get hit. And of course it was Gideon's right of way, so Gideon wins. The right of way rule, despite being just a way to score double kills, changes the way people duel. It's a game within a game, that makes you think about when it's safe to attack and when it's not. It can simulate the fear of an enemy charging at you with a sharp weapon, when without this rule, you would maybe think of hitting him in the leg, when he hits your head. After all, it would be a draw, right? Right, but not when this rule applies. I should also mention that this fencing priority rule also has a bad side effect. With this rule, if you have the right of way, you just go. After all, if it's a double hit, you will win. And that's a mindset that is just... Uh, terrible in a real fight. So there you go. Now you know everything. 
In the end of the day, it's just a fun way to add some variation and even more strategy to your fencing. See you next time!